for coming to join us in celebrating our 21st birthday. Thank you. Um, as this anniversary has prompted me to look back over the last 20 years of my life, uh, on reading something on Nelson Mandela recently, I found the following statement he made quite apt. He said, may your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. May your choices reflect your hopes, not your fears. And I find this simple but empowering statement resonated with me and perhaps helps explain why I'm able to stand before you tonight, 20 years after, after all my work hard books. <laughs> to give a different insight into what it's like running word power. So here goes. Um, I kid you not, I was scared to open word power. I knew nothing about running a business. Some, like my accountant, my, may pretend I still don't. <laughs> they try to grapple with weird, counterintuitive concepts to them, like profit not being the primary motive for running a business. <laughs> and I was fearful of failure, of not being, any, of not being up to it, and put off the decision to set up by distractions, such as doing an MPhil in publishing and continuing my paid work as a TV researcher. Granted very well paid work, uh, which helped me set up the shop in the end, but work which started to suck the life out of me, and the media world really wasn't for me. I'd been a volunteer in the women's bookshop Women's Zone in Edinburgh, that's Women's Zone, the Z, uh, which closed in 1986, and I've seen First of May, uh, another radical bookshop, close in 1989. And I knew their closures weren't because there was no need for a radical bookshop in time. Uh, in discussing my dream to open a bookshop, I remember my good friend Maggie one day asked me what I was frightened of and what was the worst that could happen. In a sort of light bulb moment, I finally confronted my fears and somehow got the confidence to go for it. Uh, others then assisted me in the process, and before I knew it, I had taken on the lease, a one-year lease, for the lovely wee shop at 43 West Nicholson Street. Just a one-year lease, mind. I was not brimming over with confidence. <laughs> Indeed, it was a few years before I signed a long-term lease. I opened the shop on 22nd November, 1994, when a few friends gathered. Maggie, Karen, Cara, Fiona now in Australia, and Fiona McDonald, and I cut the red ribbon, and there's a picture there, you might have seen the one through there. And it's very hard that somebody actually asked, who was that person? <laughs> <laughs> it's the sole photo I'm aware of the occasion, um, so yeah. Uh, my friend Karen bought the first book I ever sold, which was Women Who Run With The Wolves, which was a big seller at the time. I remember vividly the ching of the till, and for quite some time I felt like a kid playing at shops. <laughs> although I'd worked in the shop before and used a till, somehow this felt like a whole new experience, and it felt quite surreal. For quite a long time, people handing me money over for books. <laughs> um, the shop was launched in a more public way when James Cameron came and opened it for us on the 1st of December 1994. It was a joyous evening. My mum came, Tocha was there, friends, supporters and well-wishers. Julia had made me a pair of angel wings, which I just really strapped on. My God, there's no photos of that. <laughs> I was full of hope that somehow word power could make it, could survive, following the footsteps of the Edinburgh Radical Bookshop's Women's Zone First of May, <coughs> First of May and Western Wild, and provide a resource to communities, access to literature out of the mainstream, and just be a place where like-minded folk could meet. It's never been easy. I've worked hard, friends can testify to long absences of contact to this day, and if I have one regret, it is neglecting my friendships too often and for too long, and I can only thank those dear friends for not in turn neglecting me. You are also to be thanked for making work as such a success. I could not have done it without your support. Some of you are here tonight, and you know who you are. A very big thank you to you all. 
The list of thanks is too long to name everyone who has contributed to word power's involvement, so please forgive me if I've not mentioned everyone by name. So many writers have given freely of their time and embraced the word power ethos. I see many of you here tonight. Loyal customers who have been wonderful ambassadors for word power, where would be without you? People who have worked in the shop on a paid or voluntary basis, in particular in recent years to Lisa, who leaves us soon to venture into the Arctic, and we wish her well on her travels. Publishers and their reps who have supported us, even subverting the system from within to give us better trade terms. I won't mention any names at the moment. <laughs> and of course, friends and supporters who've helped us out in all sorts of ways. With bookstalls, particularly Joan and Brenda, with its store events, particularly Maggie, Jenny and Rod, with publicity and networking, especially Joan Robertson, with walking our dog Marshall, who even made it on the left, and that's nothing to do with me, um, for looking after him so we could go on holiday, particularly Evie, with whom he's no doubt reclining on the sofa tonight, and to Vanessa. With painting the shop purple after our first few years being red, when we took on number 45, thank you, Carol. With publishing our Word Power book titles, now a list of over 20 titles, and it's great to see the author of our latest book, Murray Armstrong, who has written the story of Thomas Weir here tonight. Copies for sale, yeah. Copies for sale, please. <laughs> with the Radical book, book Fair, where would we be without those who helped set up and pack up, and especially the phenomenal and tireless energy and support of Dave Newton, whom we could not manage without, though I'm sure he wished he could. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the dates for next year later. <laughs> and finally with tonight, Julia, who's offered to make us a cake and has brought three that are in word power colours. So it's chocolate cake. That will be later. Thank you, Julia. And uh, to Francis, who's organised the music, and maybe Johnny as well, but I haven't seen him yet, so I don't know. Yes, yeah. Oh, Johnny, hi. <laughs> Welcome to Carl. Um, anyway, as we're not all here for some kind of prolonged Oscar speech, I just want to single out a couple of people who have really made this 20th birthday milestone possible. Firstly, my mum. Well, that does sound a bit like an Oscar speech. <laughs> <laughs> um, those of you who've been coming to the shop since the early days will remember her well. She regularly helped out in the shop, often doing these stints to give me a break. She's the only one I know who's put her hands down a guy's trousers in the store to retrieve a book she suspected to be a After she confronted him and he denied it. Sheepishly, he let her do it. She pulled out the book and he said, sorry. I believe it was not a pleasurable experience for either of them. I was forced to had the audacity, but then I guess I had to have got my own tenacity from somewhere. She was so supportive of me, and that emotional and practical backup and love and support can never be underestimated. No one does it on their own. There's always someone there in the background, behind the scenes, peeling the potatoes and doing the unseen, but fighting the work. And so, yeah. yeah. Please, my dad and brother are here tonight. As although we may not share the same political outlook on everything or anything, <laughs> the fact is they have been supportive of me and her option and always wanted the best for me. And that is a truly wonderful thing to have and to feel and a family support which I do not take for granted. So thank you, Dad, and thank you for it. Secondly, the person I most want to acknowledge and thank is the person who provided me with inspiration for setting up Word Power, who has given me the most encouragement and hope. Hope that we can achieve a better world and make a difference. We spoke of the radical black and third world book fair, of new beacon books, of campaigns spot in one, of ideas, 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 and yet more exciting ideas. These are all part of the process of making a bookshop a radical bookshop such as Word Power a meaningful entity. Many of you will know him in your own context and will have experienced the feelings of excitement, solidarity, support and optimism he instills in people. A tremendous toughness in politics, but such a tenderness too. He has a wealth of campaigning and political experience, 
who finally often thinks I don't listen to his advice. <laughs> he is the person I trust and rely on the most, and word power books would not be what it is today without his input. When my mum was ill in 2003 to 2004, he took up the reins in word power to enable, to enable me to get to the Western and subsequently Marie Curie, and consequently the shop survival was secured. I will never forget that support at such a difficult time of keeping the shop going. I speak, of course, of wonderful interruptions. <laughs> The ideas continue to flow and we'll see where they take us. Certainly one of our next big tasks is to revamp our website which is old and clunky. For this we've been told we need to raise about 20 grand. Not only for a much more sophisticated search engine and e-commerce site to cope with data for millions of books, but in keeping the word power ethos we want to be able to, to include all the podcasts, photos and films etc. on all our talks on our website as there are some incredible events and talks to share. Like the Bricks and Mortar Word Power Bookshop, we want a website which is a genuine community resource, packed with info that local communities can use in their campaigns, that local media groups can use to engage with writers, etc. We have big plans, so we'd welcome any creative suggestions for finding big bucks. And we've moved out moving the bank is not very creative. So, on we go. For how long, who knows? Uh, there is a sheet next door which we'd invite you to sign, post a comment, a doodle, whatever, and this will be incorporated in a poster to commemorate the 20th anniversary, which my friend Paul of the Cafe here tonight has offered to design, which will hang up in the shop. The original one from 1994 was next door, so you can get the gist. Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming to help us celebrate. It means a lot to us. May your own choices in life reflect your hopes, not your fears. So to writers, readers, activists, we thank you for all your support and we hope you enjoy the evening. thinkers and 
not allow the politicians to take the ground from us just now. Aware of that with what's happened over the Tibetans debate, really the, it seems sometimes I felt as if no one's actually talking for for the kind of people that I, I don't want to kind of live in Scotland. No one seems to really be able to talk about the actual the intellectual traditions or the, the, the real kind of political traditions. They're, they're kind of scared to take it on, you know, they don't, they don't seem able to do it now. Instead, they seem always to be appealing to each other as kind of a bullies. <laughs> you just see these kind of people who are used to a certain way of looking at what politics is and my, my political representation is there somehow the, the, the idea of like, this is a way to live your life and like, you know the, to live by an ethical code to live by things like justice and humanity and how we view these things and it, there, there seems to be this is a real danger just now in Scotland and it goes and I don't want to be by hand partisan but when I saw Gordon Brown talking I just felt dear dear believe that kind of stuff and uh, it started to feel a real kind of repugnance uh, for politicians I have to say but I think it might uh, well I like mentioning Tarojan I remember uh, in fact me first time I met Tarojan I think might have been in a similar and all there was a cafe royal was upstairs you know, <laughs> there was another kind of excellent night uh, organised by the end review in the university I way back about 25 it was a real kid, and at that time, see, I was on the room. And I was aware of the citizen rights office and this, the struggles that Tarotian was going through in that period to try, with a great kind of band of volunteer workers around at that time. And I remember a couple of the campaigns, they read in Glasgow, this was a couple of years before, and I see a couple of faces I know from I put around then. We were just kind of you know, organising also in Worker City. You know, that during the European City of Culture, which Stephen, a couple of years before that, I think, in 1986, 87. Now, uh, just at that time, being aware, it, it was coming face to face in a confrontational way with some of the politicians that Tom Roche was having to deal with, and some of the dirty trips that we got up to, thinking particularly one day, case day, really, to do with racism. We were quite happy to allow uh, Tom Roche's name and so on. Uh, uh, to, to be identified by people who should not be able to identify. And I remember at that time there was a, a cut, big campaign on the cuts here in Edinburgh, and I came through to speak of that. And it involved the uh, Ribbon 1990, I think, around that period. And I remember when we had to go into the council chambers, and it was just, and I'll not forget that, seeing Lothian Regional, a Lothian Regional Council, the councillors there from the Labour Party sitting. That I extraordinary look of contempt for the people that were there campaigning for the various struggles around in Edinburgh that were being destroyed at that time. And the look of contempt that just reminded me, in fact, of Glasgow again <laughs> with the Labour, the Labour Council there. And you, it's like you don't see that kind of contempt for the, the, the actual people. You know, it is so bad and it's quite shocking if you've not experienced that before. And I see that right. Like, see that with them just now and I think and that, that's why it uh, places like what power are so so crucial where you have communities coming to and different communities, different minority groups who are in touch with each other and showing solidarity. Things again that politicians don't even know we're talking about solidarity is So anyway that uh, just to uh, I suppose that's really come on as well. But it's just it's great to see a lady a lady's dad there, you know and it's a Russian who I came a pal for 25 years and oh, it ain't not much shorter than that. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, how can she hide? This place has been open 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a, another round of applause for Tarosian and for the